Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the final masterclass of the NBC Summit. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to end it on a high note. <laughs> the masterclass track. So, oh, there's a couple of hey hi pouring already. Just wanted to know if you can see me and Komal clearly, hear us clearly. Hi guys. Yes, yes, yes. Lot of yeses. Loving the energy in the chat already. Awesome. Waiting whole day for Komal. So when there is <laughs> so when there is same. Diksha Singh, I've been refreshing the page for so long. Yeah, yeah. I I can understand that you they want you to start the masterclass as soon as possible. So, <laughs> so and then yeah. I at the backstage and then Komal the stage is yours. So in content writing, different audiences need different styles of writing. What works for business leaders does not work for students. We bring to you this session by Komal Ahuja because B two B content writing is a domain with huge scope today. She will teach us the important things to keep in mind when writing for businesses, so that the content will win the hearts and purchases of business clients. All right then, the stage is yours, Komal. Awesome! Thank you so much, Pawan, for. Yash for such a great introduction and hi guys, thanks so much for joining in. I love the enthusiasm already. So without wasting much time, because I do have a lot to share with you guys, and I do want to have a little bit of time at the end to kind of uh, do a quick Q and A as well. So I'm just gonna hop into what I have to present to you guys today. Okay. Super. You can see my screen. I hope, and um, awesome. So I'll move forward. So first of all, thank you so much for joining everyone. I'm gonna be talking about B two B writing. Um, so this is a much awaited session, and I was really glad that Pepper kind of came up to me and kind of pitched this session to me because I've been wanting to kind of do a masterclass or like kind of write an ebook on the same because I've got a lot of requests pouring in about you know uh, me being able to talk about this topic, and I'm really glad I got the chance. Uh, so thanks to Pepper again for bringing that up to me. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the what why and how of writing for b2b brands i'm going to be taking you through an entire road map which will help you kind of understand what it takes to go from the you know go through the entire journey of first understanding the brand to delivering an article which is published ready not with a lot of edits and which actually drives results for the brands so without much introduction um i'm going to first introduce myself and then i'm going to move on so um i'm a b2b saas writer i work with software companies who have products in marketing sales and e-commerce i write blog posts and case studies for them uh which helps them drive product conversions and build thought leadership on google right um so moving forward what the fish is b2b i think this question haunts me every time in my instagram dms especially with people asking me kumar what is b2b like what do you do who do you write for what kind of content do you write for what kind of topics do you write for um so let me just clarify it once and for all b2b is a business model where businesses sell products and services to other businesses so let's say um an insurance company is selling um let's say a corporate insurance model to another company or a furniture company is preparing um office de uh, office desk chairs and um desks and all of these things for businesses or a software company like an accounting a budgeting tool or a marketing software even airmate is a b2b saas tool right so now b2b is like i told you b2b is something that uh, where brands sell product or services to other businesses right um so instead of the consumer being a normal person like you and me um this is an entire business like decision makers executives marketing teams product teams and so on right um but when it comes to b2b writing i think more than just writing a b2b writer is a journalist a writer of course Uh, a sales person because they're gonna uh, persuade the entire organization to invest in a certain product or a service, and they're a full-time communicator because you've always got to do all the back and forth to communicate, um, to persuade, to kind of understand the pain points that the target audience is facing and how you can actually present it in a very digestible and crisp format so they actually take action, right? 
moving forward um what is the difference between b2c and b2b writing so just kind of simplifying it for you b2b is business to business b2c is business to consumer now business to consumer let's say i want to get um, i want to shop for a sweater right i go to h&m and i buy something right that's b2c now if i invest in let's say air meet or let's say zoom for business that's a b2b transaction so there's a difference between having a b2c transaction and a b2b uh, transaction so you get the difference right dealing with consumers in b2c See, dealing with businesses in B two B. Now, there's a lot of different when it comes to writing for the two. Um, I think business models, right? So the first one is audience. In B two C, you're de- dealing with a single consumer. So if you're, let's say, if you're writing for um, an accessories brand or a clothing brand, right, or a beauty or a skincare brand, you particularly have to appeal to one person who's going to be buying the product from you and going to be using it for themselves. They're going to care about what the product will look like on them. how will their life change after they use the product why should they use the product of uh, the amount of money money they're spending on the product how will it impact the life they're re- leading and so on but with b2b the audience is around 5 to 7 people who are the decision makers in an organization this can be the cto the cmo the cfo um the marketing team the product team or the entire organization it's mostly the stakeholders making the buying decisions uh but you've got to communicate and sell and appeal to a larger audience as opposed to a single consumer with b2c writing right that's the first difference the second difference is the impact now what do i mean by impact with b2c writing you're writing content which appeals to one person so in the end whatever de- purchase decision they make will impact only their life but when you persuade and appeal to you know like a b2b organization you're particularly telling them to invest in you and that will impact their entire organization uh the revenue they earn the sales they uh, generate the bottom line that affects it, the profits they generate how their organization functions and everything that drives their business forward huge responsibility right uh but yeah and the third thing is goals there is a lot of difference between the motives and inspirations for which a b2c and a b2b consumer buys so for a b2c consu- uh, for a b2c um a consumer the motive or the goal of buying a particular thing might be okay i just want to buy it because it might just look good on me or i want to buy it because i want to taste it if it's um, let's say a food item or a beverage item right but if it's b2b um their goal can be to improve uh, organizational efficiency it can be to streamline their workflow it can be to improve their working processes and so many other things which impact their entire business so the goals and motives with which they buy also differs and that is why the writing in which you'll actually um, kind of communicate and uh, you know position the product or service for whom you're writing is going to be very different because the end goal is different right with b2b there is a value first proposition that needs to be put in place with b2c you can always appeal with emotions for example if i want to buy um let's say i want to buy a mattress right if i want to buy a mattress for my house um you know a, a write up which tells me how comfortable it's going to be when i sleep at night or how i'm going to dream good dreams and all of these things might just appeal to me but if you're appealing and writing for a b2b audience emotion does not work because they don't care about that they care about logic they care about numbers they care about how it's going to help them they speak very realistically they want everything to be logical everything to have a why behind it and that is why again the writing differs when we talk about the length of the sales cycles like i said would be to see there's only one person involved so when you're writing an article you're eventually just telling the person on the other side of the screen to kind of buy the item the product or the service whatever you're selling but with b2b there is one person behind the screen but there are a lot of people involved in the back end who contribute to whether they purchase the product or service or not so a sales cycle is much much lengthier in the b2b um, you know business model but in b2c it's fairly smaller so it's easier to persuade the customer but given the noise on social media and everywhere around us after the pandemic and everyone going online even b2c writing is not that easy to kind of translate efforts into results right uh, but b2b 
well it has never been easy but yeah i mean it it's super super interesting the audience is interesting um catering to different audiences in a single write up so a, a lot of times i write for brand for example i was writing for an e-commerce multi channel fulfillment uh, soft best sounds very heavy but it's not um so i was working with them now i had to write an article which appealed to the cfo as much as it did to the marketing team because some some somewhere along the line it happens that the stakeholders were involved in making a decision for a particular product or service some people agree with it some do not so your article also needs to cater to different audiences with different oppositions sales objections motivations to kind of actually appeal to them right so all of these things matter now that is the difference between b2c and b2b so you know that b2b is a bit more elongated and a little complex it's not difficult or technical or you need like an uh tech background to kind of write a uh, b2b content i have a literature degree i have i have no interest in tech whatsoever but i do love products and that's exactly why i chose b2b um so yeah moving forward what all comes under b2b writing again just wanted to clarify all these things before i move on to our road map the niches there are n number of niches that come under b2b those are just businesses selling to other businesses right but some of the most popular and profitable ones if you're going to be a freelance writer are saas hello <laughs> finance healthcare ai and tech crypto e-commerce retail marketing and sales all of these niches very profitable lot of demand a lot of uh, companies or b2b companies in all of these niches are investing in content marketing in fact do you know um the world's most successful b2b businesses invest around 40% of their entire budget which does not include recruiting people on content marketing this means development of blog posts case studies white papers all of these things and the ones who are not successful invest only 14% of their budget on content marketing so you can see the difference right and that is exactly why a lot of companies tend to be successful in the long run because they invest in content marketing moving forward because it takes a lot of touch points for a b2b consumer to be converted into a paying customer right now when i talk about content formats i'm talking strictly about b2b content writing not copywriting there is a difference right now when i talk about b2b content writing which is educating the audience and selling the product and service through that um the, the most popular content formats and in which a lot of businesses invest are blog posts newsletters which go on emails case studies which build social proof and tell other customers other businesses that um this particular company has helped another similar business um solve a particular problem right then there are white papers which are lengthy reports like in depth very resourceful reports uh, which talk about a certain problem and a solution to them right so all of these reports that you saw uh, see from salesforce hubspot later media um forester all of these are actually white papers then there are ebooks that there are social media posts and there are video scripts again youtube is very very popular among um, you know b2b and that is why a lot of people also write video scripts in the same segment now when i talk about the purpose and end goal with b2b writing your end goal is always to either generate leads for the product or service that you are uh, kind of advocating for like the client you are writing for or the company you are writing for um to drive conversions and sales for the product or service to drive thought leadership that is to be known as an expert in the industry by establishing a presence on google social media all of these platforms right so basically the main selling channels and the last point is brand awareness and strengthening so inevitably if a business does not know that you exist and you can help them they cannot buy from you so again blog posts all of these content formats b2b writing helps a business achieve all of this right so they massively invest in it as well now before i move on to the road map one last thing let's talk about the b2b content marketing funnel okay i just realized this was not in full screen sorry okay so the b2b content marketing funnel very quickly in very simple terms when a consumer uh kind of let's say the a business is facing a problem right they're not going to go from oh wait i have a problem to directly investing into um like a solution where they'll actually have to spend thousands of dollars b2c 
doesn't take a lot of convincing because that's like splurging hundreds of dollars but with b2b you're practically spending thousands of dollars and maybe millions over the years right so the uh, like i said the sales cycle is a little longer and so the writing also needs to appeal to all of these stages now i'm just giving you a gist of what all is covered throughout the content marketing uh funnel right so let the first stage is awareness the second is consideration third is decision and the fourth is retention now what does this actually mean komal because this is jargon for a lot of people i understand so let me just quickly simplify it now let's say that um you're working as a freelancer or you're working as a content marketing professional and you see that you're spending a lot of your time schedule like kind of manually publishing everything on social media and now if you're a social media manager you might as well spend all of that time creating content than actually posting it online because that is just copy pasting a caption finding hashtags all of these things and posting it regularly every day day after day that is very time consuming which you can actually spend creating more content ideating more stuff collaborating with more influencers and creators right so how about you automate this now you identify that there is a problem i'm spending way too much time on manually publishing all of these things this is the awareness stage where you are aware about the problem you are facing but you don't know yet if you need a solution for it right so at this stage if if a company if a b2b business wants to target p other b2b businesses in this segment the awareness uh, segment they're going to create blog posts um infographics landing pages a podcast episodes around the topic to kind of educate the audience about the problem they're facing mind you this is the problem not the solution because they haven't reached the stage where they need a solution for the problem yet now after a point of time after reading a bunch of blog posts you realize that man this is a problem that i can solve now i need to find a solution for it you move on further down the funnel to the consideration stage right this is the middle of the funnel right uh, so awareness is top of the funnel consideration is mid of, middle of the funnel now here you understand that there is a problem i'm facing now i need to find a solution for it so you start evaluating some options you see what other uh, what other businesses are using to schedule all of these things and everything at this point of time if i as a business want to target people who are at the middle of the funnel and are close to the purchase i'm going to create ebooks i'm going to send them emails i'm going to create interactive content i'm going to go live and interact with them and tell them about the problem they're facing and how we can help solve them right because they're on the verge of deciding who they should purchase with now the third and the bottom of the funnel stage is the decision stage that this is like the day when the consumer decides if they're going to move forward with the purchase or not at this point of time i as a social media manager have told my marketing manager my marketing head everyone that i do need this tool desperately um so here are the options that i've shortlisted how about you take a look they go on the website they they analyze competitors they see some case studies they also get a few pitches on the email um they even you know kind of reach out to them for a proposal right a lot of these things happen at this stage and the last is the retention stage this is when the b2b consumer has bought your product or service and now you need to retain them which means that you don't have to let go of them like after they've purchased your journey does not end you actually need to retain them so they don't go to your competitor and they continue buying from you driving referrals driving repeat business at this point of time you're going to create tutorials to help them use the product or service better and also some faqs and like help center articles and so on right now why am i telling you this number one because a lot of people believe that b2b writing is just restricted to blog posts and case studies that's not the case you see how much content is here and i know a lot of writers who pitch uh businesses to kind of create content for the entire sales funnel i create content for top of the funnel i create content for bottom of the funnel bottom of the funnel um, needs more convincing than top of the funnel for there's a lot of technical stuff here but it is important to understand that blog posts and case studies first of all are not the only format across the content marketing funnel that people invest in and that make b2b businesses invest in something and also secondly there's a lot of stuff you can explore and there's a lot of content to be developed and that is why b2b content has a lot of demand as well right now moving on i don't want to bore you so i'm going to move on to the road map how to actually kind of develop that content so here's the juicy part 
let's move on um so the first is the understanding phase now let's say that you start working with your company maybe you're working as a full time writer or you're working as a freelance writer right so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to understand the brand now if you don't understand what the brand does what product or service they sell which problem are they solving how are you going to create content for them and convince customers to invest in the product or service so the first step is definitely understanding the brand their content marketing goals that is do they want to drive awareness do they want to drive leads do, uh, sorry do they want to generate leads do they want to drive conversions for their product or service you also want to understand what their product or service does at this point i also take like a, a product tutorial like a product dem demo from my clients to understand how exactly the product works so i can use that information to kind of um include all of that in the articles that i write right the next step is understanding the audience and competitors of the brand who you're writing the content for so the first thing is understanding who are you actually going to be writing these articles for who will read it right who is the person in a b2b organization who's going to read it which industry do they belong to how much uh, decision power do they have uh, what kind of content budgets uh, sorry what kind of budgets do they have to uh, spend on such a thing like the product and service you're offering and so on you also want to evaluate what your competitors are in this industry who are you competing with what are they offering what different are you offering than your competitors which can make people choose you over them right the next thing content specifications you're also going to understand which stage of the funnel are you going to be creating content for for the client what kind of goals are you chasing for the particular piece of content what kind of kpis which are key performance indicators are you going to track page views product conversions product sign ups so on right which cta are you going to target are you going to tell them to book a demo at the end will you tell them to start a free trial will you tell them to contact you for a quote the cta also needs to be decided so you can actually segue that into the article while writing the next thing is understanding what kind of tone of voice and language does the brand want to follow some brands some b2b brands like to be very quirky with their content some b2b brands like it to be professional but not boring at the same time and a little witty right some brands want to make it humorous and fun and a very entertaining but with a professional touch so you need to understand what kind of persona what kind of tone of voice is your particular client or the brand you're working for is looking to follow right and the last thing is analyzing gaps now what do i mean by gaps so you'll see let's say that you're writing an article on how to go viral on instagram reels just off the top of my head what you're going to do is uh, before you even begin doing anything about the article uh, what you're going to do is you're going to visit the competitors website all of the competitors website and you're going to see how are they structuring their content what kind of media are they using uh, what kind of headings are they using are they interesting are they generic what kind of infographics are they using how are they linking how are they segueing from one heading to the other how are they wrapping it all up are they very lengthy are they extremely short you're just going to analyze the gaps between all of that and recognize that one thing that you can do differently from your competitors to actually create better content for your clients and to drive results through that right now after the understanding phase is done you move on to the brief creation phase here if you're a freelancer or if you're a full time uh, writer what you can do is either you get the brief from a content strategist or you create a brief yourself both the things are absolutely fine and it certainly depends on the responsibilities you take up as a writer right now let's talk about the brief creation uh, phase what all should it include number one is going to include the topic details and the audience details what is the title of the topic what is the keyword of the topic why are you targeting this topic which audience are you specifically cat catering to with this particular topic you're going to understand which stage of the funnel is this topic going to cater and what is the end goal to educate to convert to generate leads to book a demo etc etc the next thing is the seo research you're going to see what other articles are doing for this particular topic on the internet and um like for example let's say the same post idea right how to go viral on instagram reels you see that all of the top 10 posts on the internet are listicles like they're listed as 1 1 2 3 4 right 
or you see that their um, opinionated pieces like for example they have included ways but they've also included a lot of expert quotes or the round up articles with expert opinions so you're going to see what kind of style all of these people are following and understand what would be the best way to present it so google actually attributes some of it to you and you get the traffic and you also appeal to the audience right the next thing you know you're going to do is ass- assess what the competitor is doing and how you can do it better for this particular article not for the entire uh, content creation process that you are following for this client right so for this topic what are they doing uh, what are some things that they're not covering in that article that you can contribute to right all of these things content gap analysis and competitor analysis analysis super super important and they cover just assessing what the compet- what the competitor is doing how you can do it differently and if you have an expertise in a certain thing for example if you are let's say a social media scheduling tool right that is a b2b software if you're a social media scheduling tool then you can uh, kind of uh, you know if you're writing an article on how to go viral on instagram reels you can use your own knowledge of uh, being a social media tool to kind of chime in that and tell people that you know since you're a social media tool you do have expertise to talk about this topic and you can also get like a quote from an internal stakeholder and kind of brush it up to build credibility right so all of these things this, this phase is actually about understanding how you're going to build up the article right the next thing is you're going to mention resource recommendations in the brief now what do i mean by resource recommendations um inspiration for articles what internal resources can you refer and link to all of these things right then the language and tov for this particular article tov is tone of voice the next is formatting specifications many clients many businesses have very specific formatting specifications like many people use h1 h2 h3 for formatting but they don't use h4 some brands go up till h6 so you also need to understand the formatting specifications for a particular brand the next is linking opportunities um usually briefs also include what kind of uh, links can you include in the article in terms of internal links like if you developed a similar resource already on your website you can link back to it and kind of let the link juice flow the last thing is understanding how your brand and how you can position your product and service contextually and naturally in the topic itself so let's say that if i'm writing an article on how to go viral on instagram reels in between i'm definitely going to segue like if i'm a social media scheduling tool i'm going to segue pro tip you can also like for example if i'm writing a point or something and pro i i write pro tip if you want to save time and focus more on creating reels automate your entire scheduling process by using latest uh, social media scheduler uh, try it today uh, it's free or whatever right um so just kind of use it you also need to understand how you're going to position the product or service as a solution to the topic that you're targeting right moving on to the research phase now once the brief is prepared you will go on and research for the article to prepare and outline which is the next phase this is the research phase now a lot of people stick to google to kind of back all of their understanding for an article but we're not going to do that because after a point of time on google like let's say the third or fourth result the information starts getting very repetitive and as you go on like the second page and the third page of google it starts getting very monotonous repetitive and very generic right so you want to take inspiration from various different sources so google is just one example apart from that you can search for white papers which are reports published by businesses next are scholarly articles there's an option on google where you can search for academic articles on a particular topic and you know kind of take information from there because these are like dissertations by professors and like uh, academic papers by scholars and all of these things that you can take inspiration from you can also take excerpts from the book now if you type in a topic there is also a book option on google and it will tell you which book has relative information to that particular topic and you can actually take excerpts from it or like read the summary of it online and take the key pointers to include in your article to add a touch of uniqueness to it um social media is very underrated when it comes to writing b2b blogs because people believe you won't find the information you need but you actually can it just it's just a matter of using the right keywords like you know people say googling is an art the searching is an art as well i mean for an article you practically need to know which sources to look uh, which sources to look for for information right now twitter linkedin youtube reddit podcast webinar or summit notes for all of these things you just need to go to the platform search for the keywords go to the post section and see if you can pick anything 
like a screenshot of a twitter uh, like a tweet or a linkedin post or like take um a bit from a youtube video and embed it on your website like make a gif around it or whatever right just kind of add a touch of uniqueness to it and get some more information to build your article on which is especially important if you want to rank well plus outrank your competitors right now the next thing is internal interviews with stakeholders or experts this is something that a lot of people uh, a lot of b2b brands ignore so a lot of times if you are writing an article there's all, almost always an internal expert who can contribute to the topic right so what i do as a best practice for every article for every client that i write is i always tell them is there an internal expert who can contribute unique point of views for this topic the answer is mostly yes i set up an asynchronous interview with them an asynchronous interview is when you're not talking to them live but you send them the questions via let's say email or like to uh, you know twitter or linkedin or whatever whichever platform you're communicating on and they get back to you via you know like a typed uh, text text based interview or better yet a loom interview with the recording and you can actively transcribe it using the descript app or you can just write down the major points and include it in your article and that is an original point of view in your article right the next thing is external stakeholder interviews with us uh, smes external expert interviews i'm sorry it's stakeholder that's wrong external interviews with smes subject matter experts right um so let's say if you're writing an article on conversion rate optimization you go on twitter you go on linkedin and you search for cro experts right you go on google you search for cro experts now you find their email id or you find them on twitter you find them on linkedin you just message them that hi xyz i saw that you're an uh, you're a cro expert i'm writing an article for xyz website and i'd love to take a three four line of quote from you on xyz thing for my article looking forward to your response happy to link back to you so that will get you a quote for your article or you can just ask them for information more context on the topic you are writing and they can contribute those opinions as an expert and they get a link back in return and your article is original again now the last thing which can really help you gather and that is why i tell you a b2b writer is more of a journalist what can really help you is sending out a hero which is help a reporter out this is a website and the second website is help b2b writer both of these websites allow you to kind of seek quotes from experts so if you are very late on your deadline you want to make your article unique you send in a hero and you'll start getting responses um these are especially responses to your questions things that you need to kind of add a unique point of view to your article same is for help a b2b writer just fill the form and you'll get responses very quickly but it's really important to vet these responses to ensure that they actually match with the brand's guidelines the brand who you're writing for and also your content guidelines and it actually relates to the kind of content you're writing right not all of them are very relevant but you can get some very golden nuggets from them now the next is the outlining phase now the research is in place but that's a lot of content right you need to structure it before you start writing so i would say collect all the information vet all the information that you've included make sure that it's factual make sure it's from the right source make sure it adds value to the um value to the article you're writing and it also follows the brief that you got approved from the client or the client provided you with um and structure it all together i would also say you format the outline with like subheadings headings and bullet pointers to just make sure that when you're writing you can just expand on those points rather than doing the research process all over again so this is like all the information in one document so often my outlines go way longer than the actual article itself i think i recently posted like an instagram story where my article was supposed to be 2000 words but my outline was 3000 words i actually had to write plus crisp it down plus dumb it down plus like condense it all together so this process is necessary because it will help you get all the information in one place so you can just focus on writing right which brings us to the next point which is the writing phase now just a few tips here and there to make your writing more appealing for the b2b audience number one you create a narrative now what do i mean by a narrative us humans relate better with stories we relate better with experiences than we relate with you know you should just buy this product right so by by creating a narrative i mean just kind of target the 
readers problems by creating a story around them for example if i'm writing an article or like if i'm writing an article on how to go viral on instagram i'm sorry i'm taking this example again and again but just off the top of my head right so how to go viral on instagram i'm probably going to start a creative around have you been creating content for a really long time on instagram you've been seeing other people um go viral on instagram you've been seeing them celebrating their 1 million milestones 100k milestones and all of these but you're not able to get those results for yourself even if you've tried so much you've tried different content formats you've tried different uh, music combinations you've tried different backdrops you've tried everything but it's not really working it's frustrating right this is a narrative this is me just acknowledging that the problem you're facing is okay and that problem has a solution but first before you get to the solution it's important to acknowledge the problem and understand that it is a problem which you need a solution for for which a, a narrative really helps and it hooks the reader in the first go right next it's really important to use simple and straightforward language a lot of people are of the belief that uh, b2b writing needs to be very cutthroat and like very technical with all those flashy words and everything but that's not true the simpler you are with your communication the easier it is for the person behind the screen to make a purchase decision and when it's a b2b business like another business since the buying cycle is longer you want to get to the point quickly don't confuse them with difficult words or like jargon and all of these things simplify and dumb it down right very important next keep it professional but not robotic or boring again a lot of people believe that b2b writing is boring you're talking to businesses what's interesting in that there's definitely a lot of things interesting in that i know a lot of brands who who are like who have a b2b business model uh, but they include memes in their blog posts they have a uh, very interesting sound clips between their case studies so you can make it very interesting make it very um interactive for your audience by including very interesting tidbits right so don't make it boring make it professional yes but not boring right next thing make it skimmable by prioritizing formatting now what do i mean by skimmable today not everyone has the time to read an entire 3000 word blog post in one go a lot of people would first open a blog post and they'll kind of scroll stop read and then if they find that interesting they're going to go back up and then read it again sounds familiar this is what skimmable means so especially for a b2b audience which does not have a lot of time they do not have a lot of time to kind of go through the entire article or case study or writing it's very important to use formatting to ensure that you are catering to two kinds of people number one who want to read the entire thing and number two who want to just scroll through it and kind of pick the most important bits right now for this you need to use bullet points title tags h1 h3 h2 h3 is all of these things bold italics just make use of them make use of formatting because it will help the reader relate and read the article much better next answer the what to why and how of each point with context now my writers my subcontractors know that i die by this principle writing principle every piece every heading every paragraph needs to explain what it is why it's important how to do it if these three things are not mentioned the context is missing which means the read the reader will not understand what exactly you're saying and so they won't be able to convert so answer the what why and how of each thing always and if that is missing then you've got to go back in rework it and then move on right next thing leverage real life examples to aid understanding b to b software b2b products b2b service are a little complex since they involve a lot of stakeholders and decision makers like i said right so even if you're writing articles case studies everything use examples in between for example if i'm writing an article on how to go viral on instagram i'll probably pick a viral reel from a creator's profile and i'll break it down like for example i'm writing let's say keep hook your like one of my points in the article is hook your readers in the first uh, sorry hook your viewers in the first 5 seconds of your reel now i explain the what why and how and then i include an example by a creator who did this and i explain how they did this why it's impactful and what kind of results it helped them bring right so it will validate my point with a real life example and help them understand much better so this is again very important next avoid being ambiguous or assume the audience's knowledge level like a lot of times i see that writers right 
as you know as you already know as we discussed before or you might be already knowing all of these things it's 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 not it's not good to kind of include all of this because you don't know who is visiting your website what is their level of knowledge even though you know the audience you know their persona you don't know the exact level of knowledge right so don't assume it because i mean that just puts you off right next use stats and quotes without saying stats and quotes add credibility to your article stats are numbers so be to uh, businesses care about numbers if you tell them um let's say if you tell them that um schedule uh, social media scheduling helps you save time versus if you say 40% of the most successful companies use scheduling to automate their social media processes save time and invest it in more revenue generating activities they are more likely to invest in your software so always use stats and always use quotes by experts right like i already covered in the previous step next include rich media and links by rich media i i mean a lot of people add images to their articles without giving a second thought to what they're including so make sure that whatever images you are including add context and value to what you've already written a picture is worth a thousand words yes but it's not supposed to be irrelevant so make sure it's adding value and the links you are adding should also be to authoritative websites right the last thing place call to actions with product and service plug strategically i already mentioned like for example if i'm a social media scheduling software i'm going to uh write like a pro tip around okay if you want to save time you do this and that so you also need to place your call to action strategically throughout the article so while you're explaining the problem to the reader you're also actively telling them what are the solutions for it right now once you're done with the writing it's time for seo optimization i'm not going to get this into detail because we're short on time when i want to do the q and a but seo is search engine optimization inevitably you want your content to rank on google right now three three pillars of optimizing content very quickly if you use a tool like clear scope or surfer seo much better but a lot of times brands do not invest in them although they should and i've actually i'm not lying i've actually convinced my clients to invest in these tools for the good of them and they've actually been very successful at kind of ranking for them because of those tools because us humans can only do so much when we're appealing to an algorithm an algorithm appeals better to an algorithm so it's much better to use a tool for seo nevertheless you can always do manual seo three pillars to that quickly for writers to actually kind of do on page seo number one formatting like i said use h1 h2 h3s etc to kind of help google understand the indexing and hierarchy of your content number two linking use internal links links to um other articles and pages on your website and external authoritative links number three keyword checks ensure that you're including the main primary secondary and um what is the other thing yeah um uh, all of these keywords very um strategically and very naturally in the article and when it comes to meta description meta title all of these things are secondary but they do matter to how you rank later i personally don't write these things this is handled by the seo person but um if you do write these things make sure you follow all the seo guidelines for that because super super important because like i said you're appealing to the algorithm as well right moving on to this editing and proofreading stage very quickly the first thing you have to do I made a tweet about this yesterday as well having either either a Grammarly Pro or a Pro Writing Aid subscription is not a good to have anymore it's a must have for every writer be it a full time writer be it a freelance writer it is very important because you can do manual self editing you can do manual self uh, proofreading you can even hire an editor for the same but running it by grammarly or pro writing it pro first to ensure there are no typos sentence structure mistakes syntax mistakes and all of these things is really important and should not be taken for lightly because the last thing you want is a reader being very interested in your writer but they find a typo and they kind of just it puts them off right you don't want that so apart from using these tools it's very uh, four important pillars that you can or four actually best practices that you can use to improve your content number one you make your transitions and sentence structuring a little smoother uh, when you are writing there is a raw flow that you are following you write whatever comes to your mind you you use your research you structure it all together but when you are reading it once more sometimes things don't make sense so it's important to make the transition from one paragraph to another from one heading to another more smooth 
right which you can do during the editing process you can also break down walls of text by breaking them with or kind of um making them more readable and skimmable with images and bullet points it's also important that you ensure each subhead that you're writing in the article is related to the core topic of your article right so a lot of times after you write the article you understand that okay this third or the fourth point does not relate or adds value to the uh, topic why why have i even added that it's important to evaluate it next check the structure of your article and see it if it flows naturally a lot of times apart from sentence structuring and all of these things i check if the logical order is fine so 1 2 3 4 like how it's structured you can also restructure it again and kind of change the sequence to make it more logical for your readers and lastly you simplify and pri- prioritize clarity always so if you see that a sentence is really uh, long you cut it down and kind of simplify it for your audience right now the very last thing apart from being just a writer you can get more out of a single piece of content add more value to your brand your uh, your clients is by distributing the content by like creating social media copies of the same uh, content or like um creating like a copy to promote it on the newsletter and second thing repurpose if you have a blog post turn that into a podcast episode turn that into a youtube video third thing is refresh so a lot of people a lot of brands have a lot of older content like let's say content that dates back to 2016 now that content is just sitting and if a reader comes through that and it's a 2016 piece the content will not be relevant so you can also kind of include content refreshing in your strategy to kind of add more value and just ensure that everything's going right right so yeah and that brings me to the end and we have precisely 9 minutes to answer questions um so if you do have any questions for me please shoot them if you uh if you want to tell me how the session was feel free to tell me that as well and yeah happy to hear what you all think about it okay so i am getting questions okay one question pooja has an agency that i work for introduce ai writing now they need 20 articles a day because apparently the ai i think can provide that i'm quoting of course but does it mean that ai will replace writers not at all it will assist writers i believe when it comes to writing headline alternatives and when it comes to creating a structure for the article of just maybe like a bare bones version of an article but the actual writing bit will always be something that writers do because in the end even if it's b2b b2c d2c you're appealing to humans in the end which only humans can do like i said algorithms appeal to algorithms humans appeal to humans so ai can assist people uh, assist writers but it will never replace them um questions how do you do product demo for writing i so i just ask the client to kind of take me through the product and kind of um i use that information to write the articles further uh what makes a 1500 dollar article stand out from a thousand uh, for a from a 100 dollar article definitely the research that you do how you structure your articles um what kind of network that you have that you can actually source expert quotes from that uh, for that particular article and add credibility how can you help the client distribute the article further how can you add more value to them by kind of interviewing people externally and internally to include you know kind of very innovative and unique points of view and kind of also optimize it for on page seo so it ranks better on google so you're basically helping them do the entire thing and that actually differentiates a lot um is grammarly good for script writing or content creators a uh, grammarly is just for proofreading and kind of improving the su- sentence structure sometimes it won't take your article from like average to completely fantabulously excellent it will just improve and make sure that you don't have any typos or se- sentence structure mistakes right um since a lot of brands already have in house writers how do we as freelancers make ourselves stand out and present our services as something they'd want to pay for so answering your question 
I 100% only work with companies who have in-house writers. That may sound controversial, but hear me out. So a lot of businesses have in-house content teams. They have content strategists, editors, all of these people. But they outsource it to freelancers because they want quality articles written which their in-house writers sometimes don't have the time to. Like, for example, I recently wrote a 3,000 word article in 20 days. Now, that article is going to be sent to other clients as um, kind of like a resource material and it's going to be used to kind of acquire new clients as a form uh, uh, by ma- turning it into a lead magnet. Now, an in-house writer does not have the time to work on one article for 20 days. That only an external writer can do. So if you want to pitch to companies who even have in-house writers, first of all, I would say don't pitch to very large companies, like don't pitch to Google or like huge companies, right? Um, but when you do, you can tell them that you can do heavy lifting. Uh, you can do the heavy lifting and like offload the stress from your content team and kind of focus on creating qualitative content and content which they don't generally have the time to create. Just kind of identify the gap and then pitch it to them is what I would say. Um, do we need to ask permission of... We want to include quotes from industry experts. Twitter snippets. You don't need permission, but if you take a screenshot and then you include it in the article, mention their Twitter profile as the source. So you're crediting them. And also when you include expert quotes, you're going to message them to ask for quotes, right? So then you're actually going to, I mean, they're going to permit you. That is understood if they're giving you a quote and you're going to link back to them. Doesn't make sense to just say that, okay, Komal Ahuja said so-and-so. You're going to say Komal Ahuja said so-and-so and you're going to also hyperlink to my profile. So that will give me a link back. So it's a win-win for the both of us. Can you explain H1, H2, H3 concept again? So these are just title tags on Google Docs. You can just search for them. I mean, they, they just tell you the hierarchy of content. H1 is the title. H2 is your heading. Now, if you write another subheading under that, it's, it's H3 and so on, right? You can very easily find that on Google. Will um, um, a lot of questions. I'm going to scroll up a little. Will B2B content writing rise a writer? I didn't get that question. Are B2B clients willing to invest so much time with the writer during the writer process? 100%. So my... um. My highest paying clients, they're very involved in the writing process, extremely involved. But that does not mean that I I keep messaging them or they keep messaging me. All of this communication takes place in the first week of the month. And then I just keep delivering the articles. I deliver a maximum of three articles a month to a client. And I just keep delivering them throughout. So this information is just one time. Like, for example, understanding the brand and everything one time the brief creation one time because that just becomes automated when you kind of work with them month after month. How do you reach out to B2B SaaS companies? A very good question. So um, I have a roster of these clients right now. I got them as inbound leads on Twitter. I also did a lot of cold outreach on Twitter and cold emailing. If you want to find such clients, you can cold email them. You can cold outreach on Twitter or LinkedIn. I recommend Twitter. Third thing, very. I'm also writing an article on how to find clients through Twitter. It's going to be published next week by a client. So it's good to be paid for an article, which is about how to find clients on Twitter. But anyhow, um, on Twitter and LinkedIn, you can just search for uh, terms like looking for a freelance writer, looking for a B2B SaaS writer, looking for a B2B writer, and you'll got get a lot of gigs. Just apply to them, but just make sure before you start applying, you do have samples in that niche. If not, get published. Publish an article on Medium. How difficult is it for a B2C writer to convert to B2B in a completely different niche? Not that difficult. Just create samples, understand the niche, understand what it takes to write for that niche, spend enough time to understand how the articles are structured, what kind of language is used, what kind of audience do you cater to, all of these things. Very easy information to find on Google and you will be able to transition like this. Um... How does pricing work for B2B content writers? Is it per project or per word? Completely on your discretion. So you can charge per word or you can charge 
per article and that uh, and convert that into a per project rate completely up to you is it necessary to learn seo before getting started as a content writer and web copywriter i would recommend you to start learning it you can never really learn something incomplete even i learn new things about seo every day um, but i would recommend at least some amount of knowledge about it because it's really a turn off if you work with a writer who does not know what is structuring how do you write meta descriptions meta titles all of these things very basic things so i do recommend learning it plenty of articles plenty of youtube videos on seo so it won't be that difficult um how i am going to take one last question guys because i think it's time to wrap up it's already 8 pm um how do you okay good question how do you make an article appealing to two sets of audiences for example both ceos and the marketing team so to write such an article you actually need to understand what are the pain points and sales objections of both of these articles and kind of write the article and structure it in such a way that you can appeal to both of them right so you understand that the ceo might have a problem with budget restrictions and the marketing team might for example sometimes it happens that the ceo doesn't want to invest in a particular software let's say and the marketing team really wants that right so you're going to cater to the problems that the marketing team is facing and make the ceo understand that you know this is really important for the marketing team to take up to actually generate results for their business which is going to benefit their revenue right but for marketing teams you're going to tell them why this is important how you can do it and so and so so you kind of need to understand what the objections and pain points are for both the audience sets to kind of include both of those perspectives in the article right so i hope that answers your questions guys um if you do have any other questions i'm available on twitter linkedin instagram and i'll be happy to answer them thank you so much for taking out an hour on saturday evening and thank you pepper for inviting me i think yash is here yeah Hi Komal again. Uh this was such an engaging masterclass. I could I was hooked and I didn't want it <laughs> but I'm forced to end it. I'm so sorry. Of course. <laughs> That's not a problem. Uh engagement here at the chat as well. Please follow Komal Bombarder with all questions related to writing and B2B SaaS. And uh, we have uh, a couple of more sessions left before we call it a day. for the summit so do join us in the upcoming sessions and uh, thank you so much komal for your time of course thank you so much for having me and for everyone joining in thank you bye